what do you think then about the Chancellor's strategy? Uh, would it be prudent to borrow a bit more now to mitigate against the, the effects of Brexit? Well, I think the first thing is we're not clear yet what the effects of Brexit itself are going to be. I mean, insofar as the Chancellor has got a worsening uh, financial position, it's as much to do with the change in bond yields as it is anything else and the increased cost of government borrowing. Um, there is going to be an increased cost of borrowing. There is going to be a larger deficit uh, than was previously intended. Uh, and insofar as that has a counter-cyclical effect and helps us to smooth the path, that's probably a necessary thing. But I don't think he should let go, nor we should let go, of the necessity of living within our means. And that means we have got to bring the budget back towards balance. And we can't let that go on forever. But could things for the Exchequer be even worse? These uh, 60 MPs today pushing for a so-called hard Brexit. No access to the European economic area, no customs union, no single market. What's your guess, your estimate about the effect that would have on UK trade? Well, this is, I think, an area where we do need to get um, a, a sense of where we're going. And we need to get it quickly. Uh, I mean, the, the referendum took a decision. It was to leave the, the European Union. Uh, in that sense, actually, where uh, my Conservative colleagues in the Commons, I think, are saying something that people would generally agree with, um, as a matter of necessity, that, I think, means we can't be in the European economic area because we would end up uh, subject to European rules, subject to the European Court of Justice, paying into the European budget uh, and uh, getting the rules made for us by the rest of Europe uh, rather than being our participant in making those rules. So I think that's understood. The question, however, that they wrap up with it is whether or not we're in the customs union. Uh, and I don't want to get uh, bogged down in the detail too much, but actually um, people didn't decide to be out of the customs union. They decided to be out of the European Union. And it is perfectly possible to have a customs union while we are not actually subject to all the uh, other aspects of European Union legislation, which people want to get out of. And within all this discussion about uh, money and the Brexit campaign, something you know an awful lot about, of course, the, the NHS. Uh, a lot more money was promised for the NHS if Britain did exit the European Union. There doesn't seem to be an awful lot of money around, but it, it sorely needs it. How much would you suggest? Well, I was very clear. I talked to the NHS providers uh, last month who, of course, are right at the front line uh, of uh, dealing with the current financial situation in the NHS. Uh, and, yeah, the government is providing more money to the NHS during the course of this parliament. Uh, but, unfortunately, demand is rising faster than the money is increasing. Uh, and the public, you know, all of us out there as voters, were told whichever way we voted, uh, there was going to be more money for the NHS, either because we had a stronger economy or because uh, we had the benefit of not having to pay into the European budget or potentially both. Now, uh, to me, what that means is toward the end of this Parliament, at the point at which uh, our contributions to the European Union reduce, there is an expectation on the part of the public and the NHS that there should be an increase. And I think, actually, by the end of this Parliament, in order to put the NHS on the right path for the future, it will be something of the order of £5 billion extra a year by about that stage. And can I ask you what you think about uh, this recommendation coming from, um, well, a, a variety of different views on Brexit within the Conservative Party about the government's appeal to the Supreme Court about Article 50 and the involvement of Parliament? There are those saying, as I say, on both sides of the Brexit debate, saying, well, the government's pretty likely to lose this, so why not drop it now and then get on with dealing with the consequences? Would you endorse that view? Yes, I would. Um, I, I read the High Court judgment and I thought it was, in the end, compelling uh, in the argument that the government did not have the power uh, to notify under Article 50. So unless the government were somehow to argue, which it hasn't argued, that Article 50 was not ir irrevocable, um, Article 50, the notification, has the necessary consequence that it substantially changes what would otherwise be statutory rights for people in this country. Now, they voted to leave the European Union but the actual process, the power to do it, it's nothing to do with politics, it's to do with statute. The statutory power does not exist for the government to do it, and it is a long-established convention that the use of the Crown prerogative should not override statutory rights. So, do so you they, think should, it, they should get on. All right. I mean, but if they do get on with it, do you think it would just take a, a bill of a couple of lines saying you're authorised to, to go ahead yes. and trigger Article yes. 50? That's, that's it. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. And I, I don't see why the government doesn't get on, because in my view, uh, both the House of Commons and the House of Lords will pass a bill that gives the government the power to notify under Article 50. There may be, uh, we've heard from, from some Labour and Liberal Democrat MPs, that they would want to amend it, but I don't think there would be support for that. Uh, if it is a very simple power, we all know that subsequently we have the right uh, in the legislation, the so-called Great Repeal Bill, we will have the opportunity and the right um, to scrutinise and, if necessary, to amend what the detail of the implementation of that decision mm. looks like. And on, but on, that the government that, should have the power to leave is clear. Yeah. But, but on that, then, we're closing in on negotiations. They formally start perhaps on the 1st of April, maybe a little bit before that. And, and I just want to ask you about the groundwork being prepared for that, in particular by the point man on it, the Foreign Secretary. Do you feel he's um, been rather sure-footed enough at the moment with his insulting of the Italians, German politicians saying they can't stand being in the room with him and uh, using a B-word to the Czechs? Well, um... I mean, the truth of the matter is, uh, it's the Prime Minister who's going to lead the negotiations. Uh, let's not kid ourselves about that. She, David Davis, Boris Johnson, Liam Fox, uh, Philip Hammond, there is going to be a collective uh, decision by Cabinet, but it is the Prime Minister's lead that really matters. She's been very clear, I think, that, uh, and she actually has a lot of confidence in her on the part of her European colleagues. They've dealt with her. They knew how, for example, I knew personally, I could see how she dealt with the uh, thorny issues of justice and home affairs and struck a pragmatic decision. Now that's what they're looking for, that's what we're all looking for, is something that is pragmatic. And to be perfectly honest, what some of my, the 60 colleagues who are talking about uh, simply walking away from the customs union, we've got to think about these things. There are estimates that suggest it could add four to five percent to the cost of export uh, or import of goods to go through that kind of customs formalities uh, to deal with the rules of origin difficulties, to deal with these formalities. We don't want that. We, we may be able to avoid it. And frankly, most people I talk to um, don't think being out of the customs union for the export and import of goods and complicated supply chains that we have at the moment makes sense. But I think we can be in the customs union, but still have control over freedom of movement, uh, have control of immigration. We can, we, it does not necessarily require contributions to the EU budget, and it doesn't necessarily require uh, control by the ECJ. And in fact, the issues that really matter in the negotiation will be about immigration, about budget contributions, and about how we cooperate with Europe in terms of setting standards, making laws, and resolving disputes. Okay. That's where the negotiation should take place. And I think this thing about getting out of the customs union, that really is cutting off our nose to spite our face. We want access to the single market and for people who manufacture goods in this country, being in the customs union is a no-brainer. It makes sense and makes life easier for them. It's not about tariffs, it's principally about uh, rules of origin and dealing with the difficulties that would otherwise be uh, in customs formalities.